Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper along with Tony Haggard. This is Global Wrestling News. Well, we've all been waiting to hear from Olympic gold medalist Jordan Burroughs after he wasn't able to repeat at the 2016 Olympic Games. USA Wrestling's Richard Emmel featured him on their latest Bonus Points podcast. Let's listen in as Jordan opens up about the toughest day of his career. It was tough. I thought it was tough. Um, it wasn't tough from the perspective like I had a hard road of many really good guys, but yeah. Obviously, having the number two guy in the world, your second match of the Olympic Games is unfortunate, mm -hmm. but it's not a surprise. It has happened before. Some guys have had that happen in their first time. match. Yeah. But it's wild. Six years. I've been in six world championships in Olympic Games, and I've always been on the same side as the Russian. Mm -hmm. Six times, six Russians. Yeah. And that's wild to me. Like, that's, I don't know if that's terrible luck or, you know, God's way of saying, if you want to win it, you got to be, you got to be the best guy. You got to have a tough road. But, yeah, seeing the draw, you know, I knew the guy from Guinea-Bissau was strong and he had some good stuff. I mean, so, man. like, yeah, I'm like, dang, these two guys back to back. Like, yeah. the last time I wrestled this guy, like, it was – I couldn't score him. He was really strong, really athletic and agile, and he hurt my knee. And then, obviously, Godoyev, right, immediately after. So, I'm like, dang, this two really tough matches right away. And so, no offense to anyone else in the tournament, but I'm like, man, well, if I, I can get past these guys, this will be – a better road immediately after, but I recognize that this is not going to be easy. This is going to be essentially the biggest match of the tournament. My second match, I got to be prepared. Yep. Well, let's talk about it. Um, do I have match quarterfinals? <laughs> I mean, things were pretty uh, heated. To say yeah, yeah, right absolutely. I don't, I don't, I don't dislike anyone. I don't dislike them. You know, I don't particular. I don't know how he trains or how he prepares for this event. Obviously, with the entire discovery of PEDs within the Russian community, you know, was unfortunate that a lot of their guys were able to compete. But yeah. I thought that this guy across from me is, I don't know, I'm, I mean, I don't know him personally. So, like, I can't really speak on his behalf, like, for who he has, is as a man. I don't know what he does. That was the toughest. I mean, obviously, he was a well-prepared yeah. opponent. And he's strong. He is has great technique and so like that's the difficult part is so like in our preparation we're like all right listen this guy's great from ties you know he hand fights well and within his preparation i fed right into what he hoped that i'd do and what he expected me to do which is wrestle from the open he had a great game plan but yeah the flow definitely was tough because it was like wrestling like 20 second goes mm -hmm. you know it's like all right we're gonna break a six minute match down into 20 second goes and bros you've got to try to attack it was it was tough. So like immediately after that loss, I'm like, well, man, like it, it hit you like mm -hmm. a ton of bricks. And so like it just all at once, it just kind of kind of encapsulated me. And I was like, man, I can't win. Like I can't be Olympic champion. And so like there was a wide range of emotions. Like there was embarrassment and shame and confusion and then anger and denial and you just want to hide. Like if I could have just walked away from that and immediately got on a flight and went home, I would have done it. Yeah. It it it's no long. It was no longer fun to me. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's not fun when you want what comes with being a champion more than you want the necessary competition. You know. I think that everyone wants to win, not everyone wants to battle. So the last thing I have for you, um, what does the future look like for Jordan Burroughs? That's a good question. I don't know. I honestly think if I would have won, I may have retired. I'm going to be absolutely honest with you. I may, have, I may have stepped away or taken some time off, like at least a year or two mm -hmm. to kind of just do the things that I wanted to do. Um, But I don't know, man. I'm only wrestling now so I can get out of the house. <laughs> yeah. I've been with my – it's, so, <laughs> it's so wild because, like, you know, it's so nice to spend time with your family. But there's, like – there's so there's two feelings. Mm -hmm. Because, like, typically I'm in the practice room in the morning and the practice room in the afternoon. So I'm at home for lunch and then I'm at home in the evening. But now I'm at home all day. And so, like, I'm waking up with Beacon and Aura. Um you know, I'm taking them to lunch or the practice or on the walk or to the park, to the museum, to the zoo. Then 
put Beacon down for a nap. We'll wake up, we'll play, go have dinner, go to Whole Foods or Target, wherever he likes to go, and then bathe him, brush his teeth, put him down, and go to sleep. You know, so like that's that's a day for me now. And so, you know, it's there's two aspects of it. You love being with your family, but two, it drives you crazy too, because I'm not used to being home all day. Yeah. So, you know, I I like to have something to pursue and to chase. And so it's good to be back. But for the, for me, the future really is I don't know, man. I as long as I feel good, I'll I'll compete. I'll compete because I love the sport. Right now, though, is the hard place in between. Like, do I miss it truly, or am I bored, or am I just trying to regain something that I feel that I've lost the Olympics? So, you know, just trying to decipher between those things now. But really, I'm definitely going to compete. I'm not sure when. I can't really tell you when my first tournament will be back. It's good to be back here training. Um... And yeah, I mean, I'd like to make it through 2020. Ideally, I'll be 32 in 2020, so that may be it for me. Maybe as far as I can go as a wrestler. But yeah, I think we wrestle our lives four years at a time. What's your initial reaction after hearing JB talk about his Olympic experience? You know, hearing him talk, you could de- you can definitely tell he's a little def- you know deflated here. You know, it's uh it's interesting to fact to hear him say that. He always has Russia on his side of the bracket and going in the tournament really kind of seemed like the draw was in his head. He, he knew that he had a, a tough go around, which you are already going to know that you have going Olympics, but it just seems like he just keeps getting a tough draw and chuffed off and a lot of uh, built up emotions and, and stress leading into the Olympics. So yeah, I think emo- that all this came. Right. Well, emotions like hurt, anger, uh, denial, all those things. And you go through the mind of a, an athlete so finely tuned. I don't blame him, really. Yeah, I mean, he's wrestlers are they expect to win no matter what they're doing. So you don't train to to have the you know that loss when, when it does happen. It's just devastating, and you can definitely tell in his voice that uh, you know he's he hasn't got over it yet. That's for sure. All right, quick timeout. After the break, we're going to take a look at wrestling's biggest high school tournaments of the weekend, Super Thirty Two and Conflict. That's next. Brought to you in part by McBride Man. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green but cost-effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com.
All right, welcome back. The Super 32 Challenge in Greensboro, North Carolina is arguably the toughest tournament on the folk style circuit, and this year the field was once again littered with elites. Standing out at the competition was the Tournament Outstanding Wrestler Award winner Brady Burge from Quezon Mathraville out of Minnesota. Burge is ranked number nine overall in the class of 2017 by Intermat and kept his stock rising with wins over number 20, Quentin Hovis, and Cadet Greco and freestyle champ Aaron Brooks. Who else stood out for you, Tony, at the Super 32? Adam Basillo from uh, New York, he won his fifth straight Super 32 belt, picked up big wins over uh, Nebraska State champ Joey Harrison, handled number 12 overall freshman Robert Howard, 5-2 to in the final. Wow. So, you know, big, uh, you know, winning those multiple belts says something about a guy like him. Well, for me, not really a surprise performance, but number three overall senior Vitaly Aruja, or Vito, went unchallenged in the 132-pound bracket. He had a huge win over number 12 overall junior Mitch Moore from St. Paris Graham. Now, Vito has the tools to be a Division One wrestler already. What are your thoughts? Yeah, overall, Super 32 really just didn't dis disappoint. I think Vito is right there, like you said. Huge wins. The guy that uh, you can't really say enough about, Sammy Sasso. He, he he won all of his bouts by bonus points. He's he's right, you know, I'm the top 10 ranked right now right. in the country. Something tells me he's going to be in the top five very soon. All right, let's switch gears, move to Iowa City, Iowa. It was the second annual Night of Conflict, solidifying itself as one of the top preseason duels to be invited to. 13 bouts of top high schoolers, not only from the state of Iowa, but from across the country. Tony? What were some of the highlights for you as a producer? Well, uh, Tristan Lara, he came into this event going up against number five, Nico Chavez from, from Missouri. He kind of had a little chip on his shoulder because Chavez came out and said that he was going to tech him or pin him. But uh, Lara, you know, he gave up an early takedown, but after that, it was all Lara from their feet. He was explosive constantly looking yeah. for a takedown. I talked to Doug Schwab after, and he's happy that uh, he's got a, a verbal commitment from that young man. Well, one of the most intense matchups for me to watch anyway was number 10, J.J. Figueroa from California against unrigged Zach Barnes from Iowa. This bout was all about Barnes until locked hands call late in the bout to send it into overtime. Barnes had a big Fargo performance, if you recall, and just missed a big opportunity at night of conflict. Yeah, this was his opportunity to get that big win over a ranked opponent. J.J., you know, he had to cut seven pounds, actually, Friday morning to make this weight. So I thought Barnes would get a little bit of favorism, you know, favoritism there because of that cutting weight. He was really in control the whole bout until he locked hands. And then in overtime, J.J. just got it done. I went in crunch time, ended up winning overtime. So Barnes is just this close to being a top guy in the country. He needs those big wins. So hopefully this will give him a little motivation going into folk style season. Well, up and down this event, we saw matchups like number three, Caden Cafella versus Jamie Hernandez. Your thoughts? Yeah, this was uh, number four, Jamie Hernandez, bumping up the wrestle number three guy at a, at a higher weight class. Not easy to do. Not everybody's willing to take that match. He thought he had an opportunity to take uh, Gefeller out and uh, ended up getting it done, having a breakout performance. The hammer of the night for me. All right, coming up November 5th, the All-Star Classic. We're going to talk about that and more. That's after the break, brought to you in part by Casey's General Stores. Right now, get any large original or flatbread Supreme Pizza for only $13.99. Casey's, famous for pizza. At Cookies, sauces and seasonings are business, but food is our passion. Our secret ingredient is Cookies Flavor Enhancer and All-Purpose Seasoning. It makes pretty much everything taste better. You can use it on meats and in marinades, veggies and seafood. Try it on pasta and even popcorn. Pick up a bottle at your local grocer and enhance the flavor of your favorite foods. Cookies For more ideas and recipes, visit CookiesBBQ.com.
All right, All Americans Brett Farr of Minnesota and Brett Harner of Princeton have been confirmed to compete at 197 at the 51st edition of the NWCA All Star Classic. That's November 5th at Cleveland State University's Wallstein Center. This will be the first time Farr and Harner have met up, and joining us here to talk about it is Brett Farr. Brett, how are you? Yeah, thanks for having me, Scott. Good to see you, man. I know you're excited about this. Um, I'm going to get into how your brother Chris perhaps feels about. Uh, you getting the invite and him him not but uh, anyway congratulations on being invited you're going to be facing off against Brett Harner of Princeton let's talk a little bit about um, your history first of all you you've never met this guy no I mean I saw him a little bit at nationals but I don't think ever I don't know if he's any of the any of the other tournaments last year so this will be a first are you excited about uh, being asked to represent the University of Minnesota in the all-star Oh, for sure. That's, I mean, that's great publicity for our school. And, you know, we've always had, you know, we've always had guys go like Chris Rodanes and Scott Schiller in most recent memory. So, I mean, it's just a great opportunity for me, but also for my school as well. Yeah, Scotty Schiller, there's a name I have a ton of respect for. Absolutely a great guy and a tremendous wrestler. Well, you look to do the same. You capped off last year with a 40-4 and four season, third place finish at the NCAAs in New York City's famed Madison Square Garden. How was that for you? Uh, that's the world's most famous arena. Yeah, it was, I mean, that was really exciting. The atmosphere was great. There was a lot of excite, excitement from the fans, and um, it was just, uh, it was, I mean, it's kind of hard to, I mean, during the competition, you know, I don't really go out there unless you know, I'm wrestling, so I try to stay away from that or else it'll kind of work out my nerves and stuff. But it was it was very cool and a great opportunity to wrestle there. Well, let's talk about this this young man you're going to be facing, Brett Harner. Uh, having never faced him, how do you prepare for a match like this? Well, I guess the first thing is this is the first match of the season, so I'm just slowly managing my weight, trying to get down. You know, I was about... At the beginning of uh, September, I was walking around about 222 pounds, and this morning I was about 211. So just slowly getting my way down that way. I can feel good when I compete. And then I guess just getting in shape and just working on my my craft as well. So, I mean, I might watch a little bit of film, but at the end of the day, it's about how I am how I feel and how I compete. So, How are you feeling? I'm feeling great right now. I'm healthy, even for being a fifth-year senior. And um, yeah, just I'm, I'm really excited to start the season. You know, I asked you in, in a pre-interview interview, um, uh, who actually had recruited you, and you told me mostly Joe well, Russell, right? Yeah, Joe Russell started. And that would be, so it goes from Joe Russell to Brandon Eggum, and uh, of course, Jay Robb is, is no longer in the picture, but uh, you've got a new head coach. Seemingly everything is settling down at the University of Minnesota, much to your benefit, and the and that of your teammates um is everything as far as from your view looking out is everything looking good up at minnesota yeah i mean it's just good that you know we there was a decision was made um it just that allows us to focus on our training and stuff so you know egg has been with you know he's been our head assistant coach since i came to school here so i mean it hasn't been too much of a change i mean we still train very similar and we still have that same attitude and mindset so not a whole lot has changed, I guess. I mean, there's little tweaks here and there, but we're just excited to compete and put the past behind us and have a great season. I'm looking forward to seeing you in Cleveland, Ohio, November 5th. All right. Well, I, I look forward to seeing you as well, Scott. I mean, Tony, there, there's some pretty big matchups here. What are what are your thoughts on what has been announced? Yeah, I think the you know the matches that have been announced so far, it's, it's definitely a step up from last year. You know, here's the deal. I know NWCA is trying to get the best guys involved in this event. As somebody that's put on events before, it's not that easy to do. Right. People are, are you know worried about injuries. Um, are, are they on weight? Are they not on weight? Are they in shape? There's a reason why Penn State and Iowa, these top schools, have probably declined the invitation because they don't want to take the risk of getting injured early. So, you know, hopefully in the future, maybe we can, I don't know if it's timing or what, but we, we need those top. We need this guy, these guys to be in an all-star event. Well, here's my take on the deal. It is November 5th, the weekend where most schools will be in action somewhere. And in, I'll give you an example. Ty Waltz, Virginia Tech, he's going to wrestle in the morning for his university, and then he'll get on a jet plane and fly 
to Ohio to wrestle in the All-Star Classic. That's a special event. That's a special day. That's one of the things I would hold out there as a, as a, a potential, very not, a, not only a cool story, but that's what the All-Star Classic is, man. It's an honor to wrestle at this event. So I take it for what it is on face value and that this is an opportunity to be recognized for being the very best you can be. All right, when we come back from break, it's time for quick hits. You're watching Global Wrestling News, powered by Yellow Blue Ecotech. Stay tuned. For generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defense soap, defend what you have built. Right now, get any large original or flatbread Supreme Pizza for only $13.99. Casey's, famous for pizza. In this arena, you're either the hunter or the hunted. A hunter needs armor. Earn the right to be a Danmar warrior. Headgear forged in the industrial north for the toughest wrestlers of all ages. Born in the US of A. Work with us to make your custom headgear. Warriors take hits. For better breathing and vision, stay tough with the Warrior Face Guard. Dan Mar. Warriors need it. Warriors earn it. All right, welcome back to GWN. It's time for Quick Hits. Tony, it's that time of year when fans, media, coaches, and others start talking about pulling red shirts and, for some, putting it back on. West Virginia head coach Sammy Henson has decided to redshirt past NCAA finalist Zeke Moisey. Henson also announced that senior Dylan Cottrell would move up a weight and take over as the Mountaineer starter at 165. Surprise or not? Yeah, I've, uh, I would say I'm kind of surprised that they, you know, they put this red shirt on Mosey. I mean, he, he is the face of West, you know, West Virginia, but at the same time, you know, pulling him doesn't really change the whole team. They're not going to be in the hunt for NCAA championship. They're going to lose a lot of duels because of this, but it's not a, it's not a huge game changer. Pre preparation for the future, hopefully. All right, I agree with you. I think they do lose a couple more duels because of Mosey's absence, but another year of red shirt could make that team much stronger. All right. A University of Minnesota spokesperson has confirmed a report that Ethan Lizak, Tommy Thorne, Larry Early, and Brandon Crone have been suspended until January 1st. I think it's safe to assume it's all related to the recent drug scandal. Are you surprised, Tony? And, and how do you think this is going to affect the season? We're talking about three likely starters out of the lineup. Yeah, after all, you know, this whole J-Rob drama, I mean, the kids... You know, he was wanting them not to be involved in this, and then for them to get involved in it, you know, they're, uh, it's, it's kind of a, a shame for J-Rob, unfortunately. In the end, it's half of the season. It's, it's, those duels aren't really matter at whatsoever. 
beginning of the season. So really big freaking deal. I mean, it's... <laughs> All right. I think the only way they can get back to some sense of normalcy in the Twin Cities is to name Brandon Egham the head coach. He's proven. He recruits well, knows the program. What more do you want, really? Yeah, I mean, at this point, you've got to you know say it's Egham's job. I mean, no, no coach is going to want to come to Minnesota right now and put out these fires all throughout the season, having to deal with media. So, I mean, Egham's going to have to take the job. And it's going to, I think it's going to take a year or two to get a top, top coach in there if they're wanting to get rid of Egham, too. Well, the Big 12 has decided to not expand. That's not really an issue for wrestling right now, but it does make it more likely that the conference will disband entirely in calendar year 2025. Well, 2025, I, I feel like that's that's a long ways away. I feel like Texas is prime spot to, to add wrestling. We need a lot to happen, though, at the youth level, the high school level. You know, Texas doesn't really need this. Some of the other the Big 12 teams. They don't really need this as a sport, but obviously the you know, NWCA, they're going to be trying to push for some of these teams to uh, pick up wrestling. Oklahoma and Oklahoma State are going to be fine either way. Iowa State, West Virginia, well, they're going to be a little bit concerned right now. I think Iowa State ends up in the MAC. West Virginia probably in the ACC where they should be anyway. It, you know, we've seen these conference change you know hands so much in the last five years 10 years from now who knows where we're going to be at who knows what kind of tv deals we're going to get pac-12 has a network big 10 has a network you know the max close to getting a network they're on espn3 so i, I think we're gonna have more you know money deals so who knows where all this alignment will happen 10 years from now all right tony good work out of you it's time for us to shut it down because we're out of time for tony hager i'm scott casper we'll see you next week right here on gwn have a good one everybody